Here we go. Okay, so by now you've probably opened Lightroom, dabbled with the settings. You might've even bought a few presets, but you're still not sure why your photos don't look like someone else's on Instagram. Now, after a few years of using the software, I have found a few things that have helped me become more effective in customizing my looks and more efficient when working in Lightroom. The first is the sharpening mask tool. So we all know that we can increase sharpness in a photo, but when you increase sharpness across the entire photo, you're introducing noise in unwanted areas of your image. So to have better control over your sharpening, increase your sharpness, then hold Alt or Option and increase the masking slider. What you're gonna notice is your image turn completely white and as you move it to the right, portions become black and others become white. What's happening is we are focusing sharpness on specific parts of the image. So for example, if we zoom in really close with no masking, you'll notice a lot of noise in the sky. When we increase the masking tool, you'll notice that noise slowly disappear. What's happening is we're refining the sharpening mask to only the corners and edges of the building. This is really great when you wanna refine your look and not add too much noise to your image. All right, next is something called the panel reset. We all know that at the bottom right hand corner, you can reset the entire image back to default. And if you didn't already know, you can double click on the words to reset all of the values back to zero. But if you're in something like the HSL section, this can get extremely tedious. So a quick way to do this is hold alt or option and you'll see reset hue, saturation and reset luminance. And that resets everything back to zero really quickly. And next is easier tone curve adjustments. When you're using something like a trackpad or a very sensitive mouse, it can be easy to get carried away with the points on the tone curve. So a simple way to make small refinements is hold alt or option. And then you can decrease the sensitivity at which that tone point moves. This is super helpful when you're working in the red, green, and blue channels because you don't want to push it way too far and give your image an unnatural look. So having the ability to do that small refinement, slightly adjust, won't overdo your look and will give you exactly what you're trying to achieve. Another tool that's helped me a lot is called the target groups in the tone curve and the HSL section. The target group is the little dot in the upper left hand corner of the tone curve and the HSL section. When you select this on the tone curve, you can actually select a section of your image to increase or decrease the highlights and the shadows. You can also do this in the RGB channels to increase or decrease a certain hue within the shadows. You don't want to push this too far. Like I said, this can also be done in the HSL section. But what I really like about this when I was just starting out is let's say you have an image like this. The trees here look green. So you would assume if I move the green sliders, then I'm going to see the trees change. For this instance, that's not the case. What you can do is you can actually select the target group, hover over, click and drag up and down to see what specific colors are in that area of your image. This has been really helpful for me in the beginning when I was just getting used to colors in photography and it's been extremely useful to do quick, fast edits. Sometimes when I'm doing larger campaigns, I need to batch edit photos. So an easy way to apply edits to all of your photos is copy, paste, and sync. If you didn't already know, when you're on your image, you can do Command, Control, C. This allows you to copy the settings directly from that image, and then you can use Command or Control, V to paste those exact same settings to an image. What's really nice now, Lightroom has gotten very good at adjustments, and it'll actually transition all of those masking adjustments you made from the last image. Let's say you're batch editing a bunch of photos from a wedding or a campaign photo shoot and you want to apply an adjustment to all of your photos. Maybe you're trying to get the white balance right. Maybe you want to get the cropping. You can actually use sync to apply it across hundreds of photos. So to do that, simply just edit the first photo, hold shift and select all the photos as many as you need after that. And what you're going to notice is this previous button is going to change it to sync. It'll ask you what settings you want to synchronize across the set of photos. Just hit sync, wait a few seconds, and then the edit you had on the first photo applies to all of the following photos, including again, the local adjustments you made. Something I found that's been very useful for me when I'm editing photos that have been shot in a really bright setting or at night is the visual clipping. To turn this on, you just press J on your keyboard. And then when you have an overexposed area, you're gonna notice it highlighted in red or you have an underexposed area. When you start losing detail in the shadows, you'll notice it highlighted in blue. To turn this off, just press J again. Something I found very interesting and kind of useful, kind of not, is the histogram in the upper right hand corner. You can actually edit directly on that histogram. It's simple simply just a representation of the blacks, shadows, exposure, highlights, and whites in your image. And traditionally, a properly exposed histogram has something that's called a bell curve. But I found accidentally that you can click and drag left and right on these sections of the histogram, and you can expand and contract your histogram to try to get an evenly properly exposed image. Now, is this actually useful? Not really sure because you can achieve the same effect by just moving the sliders of your highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. But kind of cool that you can do it. Another simple feature, probably not new to many, is called lights out or full screen view. This is just a shortcut that allows you to focus on the image itself by pressing L once 
you just highlight the image, gray out the background. Pressing L again only shows the image, but sometimes I find that's not close enough if I'm looking at minor details. So if you press F, you can do a full screen view of the entire image. And then just press F again to get back to normal. I like this one because it has encouraged me to take more horizontal photos. In the world of Instagram and TikTok, we're always shooting vertically, and sometimes I miss that landscape looking image. So for this example, I got a shot of downtown Austin. If I wanna crop this to a four by five, which is the proper aspect ratio for an Instagram feed post, you would hit crop, go from original to four by five. But what you're gonna notice is this is not the right aspect ratio for an Instagram post. It's still in that landscape horizontal view. So all you have to do is press X and then it rotates your crop. In the left-hand corner, you can see a small reference image that allows you to understand where you're cropping. When you're done, press enter. Another simple tip, something I noticed on this photo is the building lines are not as straight as I'd like them to be. So you can go to the transform section and just select vertical and then it's going to straighten your vertical lines. This next feature, which is probably my favorite, is relatively new as of the last year in Lightroom. It's called the intersect with mask tool. Okay, let's use this image as an example. I really wanna make the iPhone pop a little more. So when you're going to the mask selection tool, you would typically select subject. But for this, I wouldn't do that because I don't want my hand selected. So you could also just do object select and draw around the image you wanna specifically mask. Now, because I wanna accentuate the highlight in the left corner of the iPhone, I'm gonna increase my exposure. The problem with this is it increases exposure across the entire mask. And if you use something like a radial brush in that section, you're gonna overlap portions of the hand and increase exposure on the hand, which is not something you wanna do either. So this is where you could use the intersect with mask tool. So I'm gonna select my object. I'm gonna use the left arrows here or right click on the mask and you'll see intersect mask with and I'm going to include that with a radial gradient and then I'm going to draw a radial gradient in the section that I want to highlight which is the left bottom corner of the iPhone now when you expand that mask you're going to see the object selected intersected with a radial gradient so now it's only affecting that bottom corner of the iPhone not the entire iPhone not the hand just the section that we want specifically so now when we increase exposure we're not affecting the darker parts of the iPhone or impacting the exposure on the hand. Another example on this image, let's say I want the bottom portion of the sky to match the top portion. I don't want that blue gradient. I want it to kind of look even. So your first thought is maybe to use select sky, but then you're affecting that highlight and I don't want to increase the overall highlight and have a gradient in the sky. I want it to be one even look. So I'll use a linear gradient from the top down to, to roughly about where it would be impacted with the lower portion of the sky. But obviously you can see now we're impacting the leaves and the foreground, which would not be a natural look. So you could intersect mask with select select sky and now you have a sky selection with a linear gradient coming from the top without impacting the leaves. So now when we increase the highlights you can see that it's only impacting the sky, not the building, not the leaves and not impacting the lower portion of the sky near the horizon. All right there you have it a few tips that have helped me take my editing to the next level and increase my efficiency and workflow within Lightroom. I hope this has helped. If you learned anything let me know what it was in the comments. As always I appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next one.